woman, okay, the, the dragon, the red dragon stood before the woman to defile her child. And that was going to what we just read in Matthew's the second chapter with the Greeks and the Romans at that time known as the Romans. Read Revelation chapter 12, verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. Uh, what color was a dragon? Red. Dragon. Red dragon. Read. Having seven heads. Heads seven. represents government and identity. There were seven different governments and identities that Edom was part of. Because you know, you did have Edomites separate from the Roman Empire. Okay? They were known as the Idumeans. You understand? But the Caesars of, of, of Rome were Edomites. Okay? As well as some of the governors that was part of the Roman Empire because they came from the Idumeans. Okay, who joined unto Rome because remember we conquered the Idumeans and which were Edomites and we forced them to follow after the ways of the Most High. You understand? And some of them kept that, okay, and like like Eunice, okay, mm -hmm. Timothy's mother, they kept that um that custom, which is the reason why Timothy was able to understand that he was a Jew because his father was an Israelite, but his father was a pagan. You understand? He was a pagan Greek. He was one of those Negroes, like the, like the scripture said, he was one of those stars that the tail drew apart. He came from that lineage of men who was philosophized by the tail of Greco-Roman doctrine, which was part of that red dragon. We get to understand that, right? But when you get to understand it, it said that it, a great red dragon. Now, the Bible tells you Esau's red, okay? And when you get to understand it, um, there's a movie called um, The Red Dragon. Okay, which is one of the um, Hannibal Lecter trilogies, I think it was. And if you look at the picture of that dragon, the dragon was pink. Okay, that's it. when I do that show on Esau and Edom again, Lord's willing, I'm going to bring up that picture. Now, it said red dragon, but you had an artist's depiction of that red dragon with seven heads and ten horns. And guess what? It wasn't dark red. The dragon was pink, but yet it was still called a red dragon. Why? Because pink is a derivative of red it derives the pro comes from red because all you gotta do is add like white to it or add light to red it gets lighter and eventually it will look pink and you got edomites that look that way because they're pink it still represents redness they're still edomites you understand even if they don't have that fire truck look okay but they're still red despite the fact that they're not technically red but they're pink because it's the same thing that's a different tone that Edom came in. We get to understand it from a uh, from a light pink all the way to a, a red to a redneck look. Okay, like they are down south. They look like lobsters, some of them. That's the devil that the Bible speaks of. And it said the red dragon. That's referring to their nation. Okay, so when you read about that, read, drop down to verse 4. Let's see what the red dragon did. Okay. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. And that was the Greeks and the Romans. So obviously the Greeks and the Romans was part of that red dragon, right? And they cast them to the earth. That's all about the Greeks and the Romans. So they was part of that red dragon. Go to show you that the Greeks and the Romans that did that, they were predominantly controlled by Edomites. Although you had different nations joined unto them, they were predominantly controlled by Edomites, right? And a dragon stood before the woman. Right, so the dragon stood before the woman, right? Which was ready to be delivered. For to devour her, her child as soon as it was born. Just like what happened with ancient Egypt, because it was trying to destroy our nation. Because why? The Bible tells you that Esau has a perpetual hatred towards our nation. So just like the Egyptians tried to get rid of us, Herod tried to get rid of us. We read in Matthew to second chapter because of the sign of Christ, the deliverer of our people. So long as we remain in that slave mentality, we're not a threat to Esau. Okay, like he's coming out with this movie about us, the Israelites, Ash or whatever, whatnot. We're a threat to this man. This man is going to be coming for us in these last days. Rest assured, men's faith will be tested in these last days. Esau and, and the devil, the actual demon Satan is going to be coming after us in these last days. Rest assured. Okay, and the Lord said, then is going to be known who my servants are. So read Revelation chapter 12 verse 5. And she brought forth a man child. Right, and a man child is referring to Christ, and it's also referring to the servant of the Lord. It's twofold, referring to Christ and the servant of the Lord that has the spirit of Christ in him. Read. All right. Who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Right, I'll read verse 5 again. And she brought forth a man child. Right, and that man child is referring to Christ. Let's prove it. Hold that. Give me Luke chapter 2, verse 40. Okay, let's get the book of St. Luke, chapter 2, verse 40. Let's prove that that mad child first is twofold. Like I said, it's all about Christ, and it's all about a servant of the Lord. But let's prove that it's talking about Christ first. Okay, Luke, chapter 2, verse 40. 
And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit. Right, this is referring to Christ. Christ grew as a child and he waxed strong in spirit. Not because of a virgin birth, but because the spirit, okay, the Holy Spirit was upon Mary, okay, from when she had Christ in her womb and Christ was born with the Holy Spirit. So that's why he waxed strong in the spirit. Not because of a virgin birth, but because of the Holy Spirit. Right? Filled with wisdom. He was filled with wisdom. That's why he was referred to as a man child. Because he had wisdom as a man. Despite the fact he was a child. Matter of fact, his wisdom was greater than man. Despite the fact he was just a child. Right? And the grace of the Most High was upon him. How come it wasn't because of the virgin birth? Okay? It was because of the spirit and grace, which is mercy of the Most High, which was upon him. Which is why Christ was considered to be a man child. Right? Now his parents went. To Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. All right, so his parents went to Jerusalem. I mean, the scripture doesn't speak of anything concerning an adoption. The only thing that the scripture speaks about an adoption was a nation of Israel. Why didn't it say anything about Christ being adopted by Joseph? Okay, because there was no such thing as a virgin birth or cursed doctrine. Okay, Joseph was his biological father. Everybody on this earth has two fathers. You have the fathers of the flesh. And then you got Father of the Spirit. And Paul explains that in the book of Hebrews. And that's the same scripture I use to cut these madmen out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, out there on, uh, on 14th Street. Okay, SOT. Okay, as soon as I brought up that scripture, their spirit just lifted off from their bodies. When Paul broke it down in Hebrews, I believe it was the 13th chapter. The definition of two different fathers. So yes, Joseph was his biological fleshly father. Because Christ was born of the flesh, right? Right. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. So when he was 12 years old, they went up to the custom of the feast, which is the Passover, which proves to show you that Christ's birthday was around the time of the Passover. Read. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. Read. And Joseph and his mother knew not of him. Well, Luke was very careful not to just blatantly call his father. Okay, because everybody knew... Well, actually, the prophets knew that Christ was the Son of the Most High. Okay, so Luke, when he wrote this, was very careful not to insist or put down that Joseph was Christ's father. Okay, that's why he said the supposed father of Christ. We read Luke chapter 3. Okay, because Christ was not just an ordinary child. Okay, he was an actual creator of the heavens and the earth and the flesh. All right, so out of respect of the Most High, Luke did not put down straight up um joseph his father okay but everybody looked upon christ as the son of joseph even the disciples looked upon him as a son of joseph and then never none of them ever spoke of a virgin birth okay nor was they looking for anyone of a virgin birth to bring forth christ okay when you read about the wise men if it was already prophesied then why was it they 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 didn't go looking for uh, the woman okay they was looking for the child right okay so that cuts that virgin birth doctrine, but that's not the point. But, you know, I like to bring that up any chance I get. Read on. And Joseph and his mother knew not of him. Right, so that explains why he didn't call him his father, all right? Because Christ's father, the only father, okay, was a father up in the heavens, okay? That was an understanding of that. So that's why he just labeled him as Joseph. Remember, Christ did not write the book of Luke. Luke wrote the book of Luke, okay? So read on. Verse 44, but they suppose him. To have been in the company. But notice Luke did put down his parents though. That had yeah. to be brought out. Right. Okay. So it goes to show you that. So I guess Luke would be contradicting himself. Right. right here. Exactly. And there was no talk of, of an adoption of Christ. Jo there was no talk of Joseph adopting Christ as his son. Okay. Because I know some of you simple minded men out there would say you adopt a fairy. No. Because then, then that means that Mary was an adopted parent too. Because it said his parents. Luke did not make any mention of different, mm -hmm. differentiating between Mary and Joseph. He just said his parents. Okay? So read on. But they supposed him to have been in the company when a day's journey. And they saw him among their king's folks and acquaintance. Read. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. Read. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in a temple. So when they found the child Christ after about three days. Read. In a temple. Sitting in the midst of the doors. The, no, not in the midst of what? Sitting in the midst of the doctors. Of doctors. Doctors are supposed to be well-educated men. Men that's been in their field of profession for at least 20 to 25 years. So these were elderly men. Doctors. Middle-aged to elderly men. Read. Both. Hearing them and asking them questions. See that? Check that out. Christ was basically teaching them. 
He was at the how many twelve year you you twelve year old niggas out there you you rehearsing Little Wayne songs right right okay Christ at the age of twelve was asking doctors questions hearing their questions and even answering some of their questions right and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answer so that's why he was considered to be a man child because here it is he's amongst them he's amongst men. Okay, confounding them, asking them questions, and dealing with them in their course of study. So that goes to show you that an Israelite is supposed to be a scholar. Okay, because he was dealing with doctors, which was doctors and letters of the law. All right, and he was sitting amongst them, and everybody was amazed because of the Spirit of Christ. The, the Lord had his Holy Spirit on the baby child Christ, that he was able to do this at the age of 12 years old. He was asking questions. He was answering questions. He was inquiring, and he was, he, and he was basically teaching these doctors and these men of profession. At the age of 12, these men had to be in their 40s and 50s. So that's why Christ was considered to be a man child, because he had the spirit beyond the, he had the wisdom beyond the spirit of, of man. His wisdom was beyond the wisdom of man at the early age of a child. Read. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have saw thee sorry. That confounded man. That's right. Mary just said, Your father and I, we're looking for you. Okay? So you know I got to take shots at the virgin birth. Okay. okay, and Christ said, did you not know I was about my father's business? Why? Because Christ had to remind her, did not the angel Gabriel come to you and tell you my purpose on this earth? The father meaning in heaven, his business. You understand? But notice Christ never corrected her when she said, your father and I were looking for you. Right, right. And notice when you read the scripture after he said that, wish ye not, thou must be about my father's business. Mm -hmm. When you read verse 50, what happened? Read verse 50. Read verse 50 in Luke chapter 2. What did and what they, happened? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. But I thought the angel right, Gabriel right. came unto Joseph uh, and Mary and they was going to have a virgin birthday. Right, right. Why were they confounded? Okay, after Christ said, which he not know about my, my father's father business? Okay, and they did not understand what the hell Christ was talking about. Where's the virgin birth? If Christ was born without a father, and if it was a such thing as a virgin birth, then they would have understood. Yeah. yeah, that's right. He's a, he, you know, Joseph, you know I got pregnant. You wasn't the father. Right. Okay, what type oh, of doctrine man. is this, me? <laughs> that sounds so sick in the head. But you know, yeah. sick in the head niggas believe that shit, me. Right. Not the servants of the Lord with true understanding. Go back to Revelation chapter 12, verse 5. Revelation 12 and 5. Yeah, and all you men that believe in a virgin birth doctrine, a lot of you got issues with you, too. You got demons on you. Yeah. One, you got demons on you. You got one that believes a man is a comforter, and you got another man who's bugged out his mind saying we don't have to keep the laws of God no more. But then he gets, but then all of a sudden he gets offended while I tell him, what well, I'm just going to fuck your wife in the ass then, or fuck her, and you can't do nothing about it. Okay, well, not in the ass, but me, I'm a fucker doggy style. And then he gets mad and upset behind that. Okay, but why? The laws of God are done away with, man. Share love, baby. Okay, isn't it all about love? Right, right. So let me share, share your wife with me, B. Let's have threesomes like the men have been right. reported in having, like the elderly. Let's just have threesomes. Well, okay, right. you, you know what I'm saying? What the, what's the problem? Okay, but me, I, it's going to be two women with me, though. Okay, right, right. certain men, you know what I'm saying? But two women with me. Yeah, like the elderly. <laughs> yeah, let's, have, let's have a threesome. Right. The laws of God is done away with, so you should not be minding if, I'm, if, right. if, 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 if your wife is sucking me off. Let's share love, baby. Love thy neighbor. Come on, B. Right, right. Your wife got to show me love. <laughs> he got offended when I said that. He got right. he cursed me out over the web. Wow, wow. All right, the laws of God is not done away with. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> See, when it comes to men's personal shit, then all of a sudden it's like, oh well, uh, yeah, the laws of God is not done away with. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Not got put niggas back into reality when it concerns them. Mm -hmm. Read Revelation chapter twelve, verse five. Uh, and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Right. Give me Psalm chapter two, verse seven. Further proving this is talking about Christ. Let's go into the Old Testament. For you men out there that don't believe in Christ, and you just want to stick with the Old Testament and neglect and just don't deal with the new. We're going to make videos against Shah too and give the understanding. Read Psalm chapter 2 verse 7. I will declare the decree to the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten. So who's that talking about? Who's that talking about? Who's the Lord's son and this day have I begotten thee? We read Psalms um, on the second chapter. Israel was already created at this time. When did the Lord ever tell Israel, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee? 
Okay, remember the Lord said, Israel is my son, my firstborn, but he never said this day have I begotten thee. That was fulfilled in the book of Acts, the 13th chapter, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. Mm 